Hey guys, last video I showed you how to create your own custom assets in Unreal Editor like this one. And when you double click them, open an editor so that you can modify their contents. If you haven't seen that uh, or you don't know how to do that, you can check the video link in the description for the previous video for how to do that. This video is gonna build on that by showing you how to make a more advanced editor and do a few other things like be able to change the thumbnail icon on here. And more specifically, when you open this up, I'm gonna show you how to partition this view and how to use the built-in graph editor, like the other uh, things within Unreal use, like the blueprint editor. And it'll include a context menu for making new nodes. It'll include how to link them together, how to change the title, the colors, even uh, have a custom context menu when you click on them for adding pins and deleting pins or deleting nodes or whatever. We'll also cover how to persist this so that you can close it and it will remember when you open it back up. So let's get started. So I have a project open here. This is where we left off in the previous video, custom asset editors. And you can see I have the custom asset that we made during that video. And you'll notice that the icon is just the default icon here. And if I open the editor up at the top here next to the tab, that is also the default icon. So first thing we're gonna do in this video is show you how to change those. So I'm gonna close the editor. And first thing we need to do is go to the, um, custom asset editor.build.cs file in the plugin that we made last time. And once again, in the dependency module names, we need to add a whole other one named projects. And the reason for that is the way icons are set in the editor in Unreal is they come from what's called a style set. So we need to create this style set in our custom asset editor.cpp. So at the top, we need a couple new includes. So we're gonna include styling slash slate style registry dot h and we're gonna need interfaces slash i plugin manager dot h and since we're going to be making a style set uh, we actually need to go to the header file as well so custom asset editor dot h uh, we're actually gonna need to include that same style or slate style class here so include styling slash slate style dot h and we're going to add a member variable here now make it private and we'll make a t shared pointer to f slate style set and make sure that starts out as null and then back in the cpp file now we can create what that is so uh, we're going to first set that to a shareable slate style set. So make shareable new f slate style set. And you have to give them a name. We're gonna use this to reference this style set later. And we'll just call it custom asset editor style. Now this name you probably wanna define somewhere, but we'll just put it here for now. And we're gonna make a shared pointer to a, a plugin. And we're gonna set that to i plugin manager get uh, find plugin custom asset editor. And you might notice that is the name of this plugin, and you'd be correct. Uh, all we need to do with this is get the content directory. And the reason we're doing it this way is so that it is relative to the executable path, so that we can give it to our style set. So we're gonna say style set set content root the content directory. And this will point to the content directory where our icons are. Now we do need to make a couple of icons. I already have some that I pre-made in the content folder in the plugin. So again, I'm in plugins, custom asset editor, content. And I just have my two icons here. And I just made one green and one red so you could see where the icons go and where the thumbnail is placed. So you can put whatever you want in for these two images. They just have to be PNGs and in this folder. And then back in our CPP file, we can actually load those images. So I'm going to make a F slate image brush and we'll call that the thumbnail brush. And that equals a new F slate image brush. And we're going to give it the content directory that we just gave to the style set. So style set has a helper method called root to content or root to content dir rather. And we 
need to give it the name of the thumbnail, which was custom asset thumbnail or whatever you called it. And then the extension, which was PNG. And lastly, you need to give it the size uh, of that in pixels. So new vector TD 128, 128. Oh, and I missed a close parenthesis there. So root to content there just takes the name and extension. And then F slate image brush also takes the size. So the second brush we need is the other icon. So just copy paste that, rename it to icon brush. And instead of custom asset thumbnail, it'll be custom asset icon. And it is the same size. And then we need to set these, or we need to add these to our style set with the correct key. And these keys are preset by the engine. So I'll just do style set set. And the key is class thumbnail dot custom asset. So this is the name of the uh, asset that the icon is for. And this class thumbnail is just a fixed thing in Unreal. So we'll give it our thumbnail brush for that. And likewise, we'll set the icon as well. So style set set class uh, icon dot custom asset. And we'll give it the icon brush instead. So then lastly, we just need to register that. So F slate style registry. Register slate style. And we'll give it the style set. And when the application closes, we want to unregister it. So F slate style registry, unregister slate style, and we give it the style set. And I have a typo here. And I suppose we should wrap these two with a uh, text because that's good practice. And that should be all we need to do. So we have a style set that we just created. We set the class thumbnail dot custom asset to our thumbnail brush and our class icon dot custom asset to our icon brush. And we registered it. So let's build and run. And as you can see back in the editor here, we have our thumbnail icon being displayed in our content browser down here. If I go to the context menu into custom assets, you see it puts the thumbnail there as well. And if I open this up, you can see the green one, which is the icon, is displayed at the top left here to the left of the tab. The next thing I want to show you how to do if we go back into our asset is split this up into two tabs and we'll have the details view on the right with the properties and we'll have a Another container on the left that we'll later put the graph in, but for now we'll just have a, an empty tab on the left. So let's close our editor. And if you remember how those tabs work, you have a tab factory for each one. So currently we have our custom asset primary tab factory. So we're actually just going to duplicate this and we're gonna rename it custom asset properties tab factory. And likewise, we're gonna copy and paste our CPP one as well and name it custom asset properties tab factory. So then we need to rename all the primary tab factories to details tab factories or uh, properties tab factories rather. So we'll replace all of those, we'll replace all of those. And then the name of this also needs to be custom asset properties tab. And we're just gonna change all the text around to make a little more sense. So we'll change the tab label to be properties. We'll say it displays the properties view for the current asset. And the tooltip shows the properties view. So that should be all we need to do here, except the uh, tab tooltip text. We can say a 
properties view. And then back in the primary tab factory, uh, we can remove all the details view stuff. So we don't need any of the details view args. We don't need to create the details view and we don't need the property editor module. And then instead of the details view here, we'll just do s new s text block. And we'll set the text to, how about just something from the current working asset? Uh, just give it that some data number on that. So now we have two tab factories to work with. So we can go back to the app mode. And if you remember from last time, we just have a single tab here. So we're gonna just add onto this a little bit to have, have it lay out two tabs. And remember the um, tab name here has to match the tab name specified in the factory here. And so when we add the second one, we're gonna need to make sure that that's correct too. So I'm just going to delete what's here. And let's see, we're gonna make a new primary area first. And we're gonna set the orientation to vertical. And we're gonna add a child to that. Split basically just means add child, by the way, if you're not familiar with the slate syntax. And we're gonna have an F tab manager splitter. And we're gonna set the orientation on that to horizontal. And add a child. And we're gonna make a stack within here. And we wanna, so we're making the two tabs be horizontally side by side here. And so this one's gonna be 75% of the view. This is gonna be the main graph view. So set size coefficient to 0 0.75 for 75%. And we need to tell it what tab. So add tab, F name, text, and then the name, custom asset primary tab. Again, that needs to match the tab factory's name. And that's, uh, we want that to start open. So open state. And then for the second tab, we'll add another split. Oops. And we'll make another stack. And we just kind of want the same thing. So I'll just copy paste what we had. And instead of custom asset primary tab here, this is gonna be a uh, custom asset properties tab. And instead of a 75% coefficient, that'll be 25%. So that'll take up the rest of the space. And then we also need to include the new tab factory. So custom asset properties tab factory dot H. And we need to register that with our tabs list here. So new custom asset properties tab factory. And there we go. And we should now have a new layout. Oh, this is supposed to be open tab, not open state. My bad. And I also spelt coefficient wrong. And that should work. So one other thing with when you're changing layouts, if you don't see your changes, you might need to go to window load layout and default. And uh, the reason for that is it actually persists your layout. So if you were working on a previous one and it got saved, it might be a little messed up when you open it. So I just do that by uh, just as a habit to make sure that doesn't happen. But now if we open up our asset, you see we have two tabs now. We have a primary tab that has the data that's in. Uh, in our object and we have a properties window with all of the properties of the object on the right and it's a splitter so we can resize it and these are tabs so we can drag these around and put them wherever we want as well. So now we want to add a graph view 
to the left tab here instead of just that little bit of text. And we're gonna try to reuse the components that already exist in Unreal Engine for doing these graphs, such as the ones that are already present in the Blueprint Editor, for example. But we wanna be able to program the nodes and the links and things so that we can make it serve our own purposes instead. Like if you're trying to do a quest tree or a tech tree or any kind of tree where one thing may unlock some other things or you have any kind of tree structure like that, uh, it's going to be able to program your own editor to be able to save those into your own objects and then be able to access that data at runtime. And so we're going to start with just a blank graph to get started here. So Unreal comes with a class called UEditorGraph. And if I go to our custom asset editor app, and we already have uh, our working asset here, so I'm going to add one more thing. And it'll be forward declare class u add graph, working graph. And we'll add a, an accessor for it as well. So we'll have get working graph and return our working graph as well. And then in our uh, tab factory, if I go to the primary tab factory.cpp, uh, we're going to include graph editor. And we want to include editor, Unreal Ed, public, Kismet 2, blueprint editor utils.h. Oops. And we also need Kismet 2, Kismet editor utilities.h. And then instead of this text block that we're returning, uh, we just want to make a graph instead. So I'm going to do s new, s graph editor, and we want to make it editable. So it is editable, oops, true. And we got to give it the graph we want it to edit, or it will crash. And we'll give it app get working graph. There we go. And we also need to initialize the working graph that we initially made in our editor app here. So if I go to the CPP file for this, and right below where we initialize a working asset, we can initialize our working graph. So there's actually a uh, utility for this that makes it a little bit simpler in Kismet 2 slash blueprint editor utils. And that will give us F blueprint editor utils, create new graph. And we got to give it the working asset. Uh, it doesn't need a name. And we have to give it the uh, graph class. And we have to give it the graph schema. So for now, we'll just use the default ones, but we can uh, extend these if we want to add functionality, and we will later. But that should be all we need for right now. And I missed a OAP OAP there. But let's see if we have a graph. We'll build and run. And now if we open our custom asset, you see we've got a graph on the right here. And we can zoom in and out, although we can't do anything. If I right click, there's nothing in this menu and there's really no way to, to, to do anything except move around our blank graph. But uh, we do have a graph that we can start to play with now. So now's the fun part when we actually get to add the ability to make nodes on our graph. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make a new class called Custom Graph Schema. And if you remember when I mentioned that you can create your own editor and schema classes when we created the graph earlier, this is gonna override the default schema class. So let me just make the header and CPP files for this. The file will include the header. And we'll start with defining the header. We're gonna pragma once, we're gonna include core minimal. Oops. We're going to include edgraph slash edgraph.h. And we're going to include 
custom graph schema generated.h because this will be a u object. So I'll mark u class u custom graph schema. And we're going to inherit from public eu editor graph schema. Oops. Sorry, just u ed graph schema. And we need a generated body. And we don't need a constructor or anything, so uh, we just need one method that we're going to override in this. It'll be virtual void get graph context actions. And this gets called when you're summoning the context menu to decide what gets placed in it. And it just takes an f graph context menu builder. And let's call that context menu builder. And it is constant, and we are overriding the parent classes version of that. So that's all we'll do for the moment. Let's implement that method. And in the CPP file, uh, we just want to specify the list of actions that comes up in that context menu. So in order to do that, first we're going to need an action and to specify an action, uh, we're actually going to make a new class or a struct rather. It'll be a use struct and it'll be called new node action. So, what we're going to do is put a button in the context menu called new node. And when you click that, it's going to run this action and this is going to create a new node and add it to the graph. And so, this will extend public f ed graph schema action. And we need a generated body in this as well. And the constructor doesn't need to do anything. Uh, we need the other constructor, f new node action, f text in node category, f text in menu description, f text in tooltip and it's grouping. And we'll just pass all these to the parent class. This is how we tell the action what it uh, displays when it comes up in the menu. And lastly, we just have a method we need to implement in order to perform the action called perform action. So this returns a uEditor graph node. And it will give us the parent graph. And if it was created as a result of uh, drag and dropping from another pin, it's going to pass us that pin. It will pass us the location where the, uh, the cursor is. So we know where to create the node. And uh, there's an option we want to automatically select the new node after it's created. So that's all we need to do with this struct. And then back in the CPP file, we need to implement that method. And if new node action. And then in here, we actually create the node. So we're gonna make a New node, so view graph node result equals new object, view editor graph node, and it's going to be part of the graph that's passed in, parent graph. And we're going to set its position to the location that's passed in. And then uh, you can also create pins on the node, and these are the connection points for the edges that you can make. And you won't be able to do this initially, but we'll just put the pins on uh, for later. So we'll do result, create pin, and you give it a direction. So e ed graph pin direction equals EGBT, or sorry, EGB, EGPD rather input. And you give it the category inputs and you give it the name, some input. 
So that's a, we'll give it one input pin and let's give it two output pins by default. And we'll put the category as outputs here. We'll set the direction as output. And this determines which side of the node it appears on. Inputs are on the left, outputs are on the right. And it also determines what you can connect to what. So we'll just call this uh, output one and output two. And then uh, we'll modify the parent graph. This makes it show up as modified in the editor. So it asks the user if they want to save. So you want to do this after any action that modifies the graph. And we're gonna, we have to add that node to the graph as well. So parent graph, add node, result, true, true. And lastly, we will return the result. And so that's uh, the action we wanna run whenever you click the new node button in the context menu. And lastly, we need to actually show that button in the context menu. So we're gonna make a T shared pointer. This is back in our get graph, uh, get graph context actions method that's called in the schema. Um, so we're gonna make a T shared pointer to that F new action node or struct that we just made. So new node action. And we're gonna create a new F new node action in here. And we're gonna give it for the category, uh, ftext from string. And as always, you should probably localize this, but I don't do that in tutorials just to save a little time. Uh, so for the menu description, uh, I'll do ftext from string. And it's just what shows up, uh, what it's labeled as in the, the menu. And the tooltip is the tooltip. I'll just say makes a new node. Uh, and the last thing's the group. Uh, we don't really care what group it's in right now. But if you did care about that, you could um, group your actions and give them a, an ID. And lastly, we need to add that to the context menu builder. So context menu builder dot add action, new node action. Oh, and actually this is Fgraph context menu builder. I think I made that typo in the header file as well. And uh, I shouldn't initialize the default value here in the CPP file. Oh, and we also need to initialize with this schema instead of the default one. So if we go back to custom asset editor app.cpp, instead of u editor graph schema, we want to include the class that we just created. So include custom graph schema dot h. And we want to use u custom graph schema here instead. So let's build and run. Now, if we open our asset again, we have the same graph, but now when you right click, you'll see that we have a nodes category with a new node in it. And if we click on that, we have an editor graph node that gets created and it has some input on the left and two outputs on the right. Now, if you look at the code we did to put that in the menu back in graph schema, uh, we just created a new node, a new node action here. You could actually create as many actions here as you want. You could also have different types of nodes in here and name them different things depending on your needs. So a really flexible way to create whatever types of graph types you need in your game. So let's say that you wanted to be able to customize the nodes that we just made. So you change their color, what they look like. And let's say if you're making a quest unlock system where one quest unlocks three or four other quests, you're going to want to be able to edit the number of output pins on each node. And so let's do two things. Let's add the ability to change the color of them and the ability to add or remove pins on the output. And we'll add the ability to delete nodes as well while we're at it. So if you remember back in the schema, when we're creating a new node, we actually decide what type of U editor graph node this is. And so we can create our own editor graph node. If I go new file, custom graph node, and we'll make a CPP file for it, custom graph node dot CPP, and we'll include our header. And so in the header file, 
Fragma uh, once. And we need to include head graph slash editor graph node. I don't know why it keeps auto completing like that. And we're going to be a U object, so custom graph node dot generated dot eight. And we're going to make our U custom graph node class. And it's going to extend from U editor graph node. And first, we're going to need a method called get node title. And this takes a title type. And we're just gonna return uh, right away with what we want the title of the node to be. You could put this as a property on the object we're editing so that it could be customizable if it's like the name of the quest or something like that, but we'll just have it be fixed for the moment. So I'll just name it my node title, whatever. And then uh, virtual f linear color get node title color. This will set what the color of the title bar is. So we'll override that and we'll just return f linear color and color green. Oops. And we want to allow the user to be able to delete nodes. So can user delete node? I'll override that and just say true. You could also put some logic here if you wanted it to be conditional, whether or not they could delete it. So maybe you had some conditions on that, but for our purposes, you can always delete them. And then we're going to override get node context menu actions. And similarly to before, uh, this is going to let you add buttons in the context menu when you right click on a node that are specific to that node. And so this takes a tool menu. We're going to forward declare it. And it takes a U graph node context menu context and we'll forward declare that as well and this method is const and it overrides the parent class and because we're using u tool menu we actually need to go to the build script once again and we're going to depend on the tool menus project so just add that in our private dependency module names like always. And now if we go to custom graph node.cpp, uh, we can implement this method. First, we're gonna need a couple includes. We're gonna need framework slash commands slash UI action dot h. And we're gonna need uh, tool menu dot h from that project we just depended on, or that module rather. And we'll implement our overridden method here from the custom graph node. And first we're gonna make a section uh, to place our actions in. And you could have multiple sections in this menu for different actions. We'll only have one for now. So F tool menu section, section equals menu add section. And we'll give it a name, call it section name. And this is the user visible one. Uh, this is what they'll actually see as the section title. So we'll just say custom node actions. And we're gonna add a menu entry. So section dot add menu entry. And in here, we have to give this a name, so First one will be adding a pin to the node. And that's the unique name. We need to add the user facing name. So from string text add pin. And the tooltip. Just say creates a new pin. Next thing is the icon. And this is actually gonna work the same way as the icons we did earlier. So we actually need to go back to um, back to the custom asset editor. And same way we created a thumbnail and an icon brush here, we want to create a few more. So if you look at um, my content directory, I already created three more icons here for 
uh, adding a pin for deleting the node and for deleting the pin, once again, just create any PNGs you want for that and they'll show up in the menu and we're gonna reference them by these names in this code here. And so we can just start by copying and pasting the existing ones and we'll add three more. So the first one we're gonna call node add pin icon and we'll name it node add pin icon. And this is also a PNG and they're all the same size. Uh, second one will be node delete pin icon. And node delete pin icon. And third one will be node delete node icon. Node delete node icon. And then just like these, we want to add to the style set for each one. Although we're going to pick the name for it this time, since we're going to be referencing the, uh, the style set ourselves rather than Unreal's code. So let's call it custom asset editor dot node add pin icon. And let's copy the first part to the other two and just add the other two in. So we have node delete pin icon and we have node delete node icon. And then the brushes, we want the node add icon brush, the delete icon brush, and the delete node icon brush. So then if we go back to our custom graph node.cpp, we can continue writing this function. And the next argument is the icon. So f slate icon, and we'll do text. And this is the name of the style to get the icon from. So custom asset editor style. And that needs to match, if we go back to custom asset editor, that needs to match uh, the style sets name that we created here. And again, you should probably put this in a header file somewhere so you can include it, but we'll just do it the lazy way for the moment. And the second argument is the actual icon to use. And this again is that string that we made for it, custom asset editor dot node add pin icon. All right, and now we need to give it the action to run when you actually click this button and we can just do that in line here. So F UI action, F execute action, and we're gonna create a Lambda. And then in here, we're gonna take in a node. So this for you custom graph node. And we're gonna create a pen. And the first argument is E the direction. So graph pin direction, E, G, P, D, output. And this is what we did before. Uh, say outputs. And we'll name it another output. And then we'll just get the graph. And we call notify graph change so that it updates because uh, it doesn't know that the uh, pin got added necessarily. And we tell the editor that it got modified as well. So the user is prompted to save. Now there is actually one caveat here and that is the function that we're in is constant. And so this Lambda is not, and we're trying to modify, or we're trying to call non-const methods within a const method essentially. So it won't actually let us capture the this, this pointer since it's actually a constant pointer at the moment. And so I'm gonna do a bit of a hack here and I'll explain what you should do in a moment instead. Um, but I'm just gonna cast you custom graph node. And I'm basically just gonna cast our this pointer to a non-const pointer. And then instead of capturing this, I'm gonna capture this node variable instead. And that'll get rid of that error. What you should probably do as the correct fix is initialize these actions in storm and member variables and just have uh, in the constructor or an initialize method on your node uh, actually create these. And that's probably the, the cleaner way to do it. But again, this is a tutorial, so just to keep things concise, I'm gonna put it all here. But as long as I explained <laughs> what the correct course of action is there, I feel justified. So that's the add pin entry method. Uh, we're gonna add two more, one for the delete pin entry. So I'll just copy paste what we had and we'll call it delete pin entry. And this will be delete pin deletes 
the last pin. So we're just going to have it delete the, the last output pin when you click on this. And the icon will be a node delete pin icon. And then in our Lambda, we can, uh, I guess we can keep the notify graph change and the modify, but instead of create pin, we want to remove pin. And uh, actually we need to we need to get the pin that we want to remove first. So you add graph pin pin equals node, get pin at, and we want the last one. So node pins num minus one. And just check that it's an uh, that it's not an input pin, so we'll stop when we get to the input pin. So if pin direction is not ed graph pin direction egpd input. So in other words, if it's an output pin, um, and I guess if it's not, we won't do anything. So we'll move that code in here, and then we'll node remove pin that we found so that should be all we need for the delete pin and once again we'll copy paste that but get rid of the code in the lambda and this will be a delete node entry or just delete entry and we'll call it delete node deletes the node and node delete node icon. Then in our action, uh, in our lambda here, all we need to do is get the graph from this node and call remove node. Now that we have our custom node class created, we can go back to the schema and instead of creating the default you added a graph node, we can include our new class, include custom graph node.h, and we can make one of those instead. So you custom graph node, results equals new object, you custom graph node with the parent graph. And actually there's one more thing I need to fix in custom graph node.h, this uh, can user delete method is can user delete node instead. Uh, there we go, and we should be able to build and run now. And now if we open our asset, we can right click and create a new node. And now you notice if I right click on the node, we have our three options here. So I can add pins, as many as we want. I can remove pins, it removes the last one all the way down until we don't have any, and then it won't let us remove them anymore. And we can right click and delete the node as well, and it goes away, everything seems to work great. All right, so this is nice that our node sort of looks the way we want now. It's got the green border and the title, it's got the context menu, but you'll notice if I add a second node here, I still can't link them together. And even if I get the context menu to come up, it still doesn't create the links, It just makes another node and doesn't put the edge there. I also don't really like how the pins look here. You see they're all black, kind of hard to see. So we wanna both customize how these pins look now and make them actually work. So let's close our editor. And let's start with making them look different. So if we go to our custom asset editor.cpp. Um, and actually, let's go to the build file first. We're going to need another library and or another module called graph editor. And I'll mention why in a moment. And if we go back to custom asset editor.cpp, uh, we're going to include a few things that we need, like editor graph, utilities.h. And we're gonna need kismet pins slash s graph pin color dot h. So underneath the pins are drawn using slate, and s graph pin color is the class that it uses to draw the little black one that we want to change. 
And so we'll start with the base implementation and just change the color a little bit is the plan. And we need to include editor graph slash editor graph in dot h. So that's all the headers we need. So now we're gonna need a class called s custom graph pin. And like I mentioned, this is going to extend s graph pin. And then in public, we're gonna do slate uh, begin args s custom graph pin. And we don't actually need any args, so we'll just do slate and args. And we need a method called construct. And it takes the arguments in and it takes the graph pin in. And notice this is the editor graph pin, not the slate graph pin. So one is the UI, the other one is the data, essentially. And we'll just name that in graph pin object. And we'll just call the parent class s graph pin construct. And we don't need any arguments, so we'll just give it an empty arguments list. And we'll just pass the in graph pin object up to our super class. We don't need to do anything special here. And in uh, our protected section, rather, we're going to choose what the color is. So virtual f slate color. Get pin color. And this is a constant override. And we're just going to return f slate color. F linear color. And we'll do, let's say, 0.2R. 1.0b and 0.2g. So you can pick whatever color you want here, but basically we're just changing the pin color here. And uh, there's an f prefix on arguments as well. So we'll fix that. All right, so now we have a slate custom graph pin that will be a different color, but we have to tell the editor to use it. And there's a couple ways to do this. Probably the easiest way though is to use a pin factory. Um, so we'll make a struct called f custom pin factory, and this has to inherit from f graph panel pin factory, which is the interface that Unreal provides to do this. And in public, we uh, need a virtual destructor. And the only method we need is uh, create pin which returns a shared pointer to s graph pin. And it takes the u editor graph pin as well. And it is once again a const override. So the, uh, the trick here is create pin is gonna get called whenever the editor wants to create any pin. And this includes editors that are not for our own asset. Um, so we need a way to identify that it's our asset, and there's two ways to do this. One way is to create our own uh, uEditor graph pin object. Uh, the other way is to just use the subcategory on the pin to identify it. So let's assume that we're going to do it that way. So we're going to say if uh, custom pin is the pin type subcategory, so pin, pin type, subcategory. Then we're gonna return the uh, custom slate pin that we just made. So return s new, s custom graph pin. And it takes the pin as an argument. And then if it's not, we'll just return null pointer. And basically what that means in the context of this method is it means don't override this pin, use whatever the default is, which is what we want. Oh, and uh, sorry, this takes uEditor graph pin, not the graph itself. So now we need to tell the engine to actually use this F custom pin factory. Oops, I uh, didn't have the Y at the end there. Uh, so if we scroll down to startup module, uh, first we need to create a pin factory. So I'm gonna go to the header file and right below our style set. 
We'll make a T shared pointer struct F custom pin factory. Well, it's null pointer, and we're just forward declaring it because we don't have it yet. And then back in the CPP file for a custom asset editor, uh, we'll initialize our pin factory. Pin factory equals make shareable new f custom pin factory and f editor graph utilities register visual pin factory and give it the pin factory. So this is how we tell Unreal what factory to use for pins. And like I mentioned, if it returns a null, it will do the same thing for all the other editors. So then later when we create our pin, we'll set our subcategory to custom pin, and then it will know to return this slate one. And lastly, we actually wanna unregister this when the module shuts down. So we can call unregister, and I think that has a lowercase r, and that will unregister it when the module shuts down. So that's all we need to do to change the look. Um, but the next question is, how do you make the pins actually work? And the first thing we need to do is if we go back to our schema, uh, right before we create our node, we need to make sure that our node has a globally unique identifier. So we can call create new GUID, because by default it's just set to nothing and the graph doesn't like that when you're trying to link things together. And uh, basically what the schema in general is supposed to do is provide the rules and the logic for the graph. So that's why we create uh, pins and nodes within here. It also decides uh, if two nodes are allowed to be connected, the logic needs to go in here as well. And so we're gonna implement a method in the header file or rather override it. And this is called virtual const F pin connection response and create connection. And this takes two pins, you at a graph pin A and you at a graph pin B and there's a const override. And basically what this method needs to do is return true if we're allowed to connect these two pins. So in our case, the only rules are just gonna be inputs have to connect to outputs and obviously both of these pins have to not be null. So uh, if we go back to the schema CPP file, we can implement this method. And so the first rule is that neither one can be null. So if A is null or if B is null, we're gonna return false, can't connect null pins. And then the only thing we really care about is if the directions are different. So if the directions are the same, then we need to say that that's not allowed. So the way you do that is return F pin connection response. And the enum is connect response disallow, which means don't allow it. And you can give it a user message. So inputs can only connect to outputs. So if they're not equal, then they are, then that's okay. It means we have one input, one output, or one output, one input. So this is allowed. And so we'll return F pin connection response, connect response, break others, A, B. And I suppose, uh, the other rule is that you can't have multiple pins connected to the same output or vice versa. So it's always one-to-one. -one. So if you're connecting to something that's already connected to something, it will break all of the other things as well. And this is the success case, so we don't need a user message. And so this will basically allow any pin connections where inputs are connected to outputs, which is what we want. Um, now we also want uh, to have a custom pin type, or rather a subcategory on each pin when we create them. So let's actually make a helper method in the node for creating pins. So if we first go to custom graph node.h, we can add one more method here that returns a uEditor graph pin. 
and we'll just call it create custom pin. And we got to give it the direction of the pin. And we got to give it a name to give it. And that's all we need in the header file. So we can go to the custom graph node.cpp. And we'll put it right here at the bottom. And basically here, we just want to create the pin like we did before, except we'll use the variables that were passed in and we're going to give it the custom pin subcategory. So I'll do F name category equals, and this will depend on the direction. So if the direction is E ed graph pin direction, EGPD input, then category will be inputs. Otherwise it will be outputs and the subcategory. It's just going to be custom pin. This is what our custom uh, slate pin expects, or at least the factory. And then we need to actually create the pin. So you editor graph pin, pin equals create pin. And this is the same as before, except now we have variables. So direction, category, and name that are going to be passed in. And we'll set the subcategory, so pin, pin type dot subcategory equals subcategory and return the pin. So now we need to go back to the schema uh, context menu code or the perform action code rather. So in perform action, we're currently using the old create pin methods. So we can just delete all those. And instead we'll do the autograph pin input pin equals result create custom pin that method we just created and e add graph pin direction egpd input and this is the input so some input and we'll paste that a few times we don't need the return value of these two and these are the outputs so output one and output two and this should be EGBD output on both of these as well. And uh, now that we can actually use our pins, uh, originally this from pin would be null because we didn't implement can create connection yet. But now this will actually, uh, if you drag and drop on an existing pin and create a node from it, it will pass the pin that you started from in as this from pin. So you can really quickly chain nodes together. And so we can actually look at that. So if from pin is not equal to null pointer, then that means we are dragging from pin. So we can do uh, result get schema and just go ahead and create a connection to that right away. So there's a method called try create connection that does that. And we can do from pin to input pin. And that's why I uh, remembered this return value of the first one so that we could do that. And it looks like I have a couple of errors here. I shouldn't be returning false here. I should be returning the pin connection response disallow. I say I need two pins. I don't even know if that can happen to be honest. And then in custom graph node, instead of pin type, this is or subcategory, it's pin subcategory. And in custom asset editor, new line in constant, I think. Not sure what happened there. But we'll just type it again. And let's try again. So let's open up our custom asset. Note that it's not saving uh, what we had here. I saved with two nodes when we closed it earlier and they are now gone, but the last part of this tutorial will fix that. So for the moment, let's create a new node now. And you can see, first of all, that the pins are now green. They're using our new slate class that we overridden in that pin factory to create them. Um, and it's probably worth pointing out that if I open a blueprint here and I go to the blueprint graph, uh, you'll note that if I make a node here, you'll notice the pins didn't inherit from the same pin factory. So that's good. 
And if I drag and drop a link out, first of all, you'll notice that it creates a link and I can write new node and it actually links it up. And I can do that for this output as well. And so now we're actually getting to a point where it's getting pretty powerful. So we could create an end node here if we deleted the outputs on that. And oops, let's say that this was a quest. When you did this quest, it would unlock these two quests and you could set the node titles to whatever you want. So it's already getting pretty powerful. But the last thing that you'd probably want to be able to do is save these, because if I hit save right now, it's actually not going to persist, persist any of these nodes into our custom asset. And so that's going to be the last part that we want to do. All right, so we're going to move into the last part of this video, which is going to show you how to persist these graphs and load them back. And it's first probably important to note that the class that represents this node is in the editor module which does not ship with the game. So we need some sort of representation of this graph that we want to be accessible at runtime. And you may not want it to be uh, laid out exactly the same way that the UI graph is. Uh, you may want to structure it differently internally, it's up to you. Um, but I'm just going to create a representation of what we've done here in the runtime portion and show you how to go back and forth between them and how to get notified when the uh, graph updates so that you can update the corresponding runtime model. And so let's close our editor. And we're first gonna create a new class and go to the runtime part of the plugin. So custom asset editor runtime. And in public, I'm gonna make a new file called custom runtime graph. And this is gonna be our representation of this graph at runtime as opposed to in the editor. And we wanna keep this up to date whenever you save the object. And this will be what actually gets saved to disk inside our custom asset. So I'm actually just gonna put all of the graph classes in here. You could have them in separate header files if you want, whatever is more readable for you, depending on how big they all are. Um, but first we're gonna include core minimal. We're gonna include uh, uobject slash name types. And we're gonna include custom runtime graph.generated.h since there will be uobjects in here. And the first class is gonna be Custom asset editor runtime API view custom runtime pin. And that's a U object with a generated body. And it's very important, once again, that you have this API call because the other module needs access to it. And without this, it won't be able to see it. So don't forget that. And we'll have a couple properties. So this is gonna be the runtime representation of the pin. So view property f name pin name, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a unique identifier for the pin. So f with pin ID. And we're gonna need the, uh, if it's connected to something, we need to know what it's connected to. So you custom runtime pin connection, make sure that starts at null pointer. And then we're gonna need a representation of the nodes. So let's just copy paste that and change it. So it'll be view custom runtime node. It's also a U object and it has different properties. So it will need view custom runtime pin input pin. This is the pin on the input. Oops. And it's gonna need an array of output pins. And it needs a position. Now we don't have any uh, custom data on the node. Everything's just canned values for now. If you did have custom data, so like the quest dialog or the quest name or the tech tree type or whatever it is, um, you might wanna have a separate U object in here called F runtime node data or something like that. And then you could share, you know, this class would have all the those strings in it and you could share this with the editor class. And then whenever you updated in whatever sort of editor UI you want to do that, uh, you would just update the F runtime node data and you could just copy it over when we're saving into this custom runtime node. And that way you don't have to duplicate a bunch of code. But since we don't have any uh, non-static data for the moment, we're just gonna copy over the node positions so that we can 
put them back and we can add all the, the pins back as well. Um, so that's the node class. And then lastly in here, we need the actual graph itself. And so copy some of this, this will be a U object as well. And it's just going to have one property, which is the list of nodes. So T array, U custom runtime node, and the list of nodes. So there we go, just three classes in here. We've got our pins, we've got our nodes, and we've got our graph, which I forgot the name. U custom runtime graph. And that's all we need here. And then if we go to our asset, the asset is where the graph is actually gonna be stored. So we need to add a property for graph, you custom runtime graph. And we'll start it at null pointer. And we need to include it as well. Very good. So now that's all the, the runtime data that we need. So now we need to actually populate it and load it back. And so I'm going to go to our uh, custom asset editor app.h. And we're just going to add a couple of methods in a protected section here. And the first one's going to be update working asset from graph. And we're going to have update editor graph from working asset. So this will update our working asset from the graph when we're ready to save. And this will update the editor from the working asset when the editor first comes up so that we can restore whatever was already in there. And so we'll implement these in the CPP file in uh, custom asset editor app.cpp. Uh, and we need to include our uh, custom graph node up here. We'll do that later. And let's see below init editor, I guess we'll put the functions here. So I'll just implement those real quick. All right, so first in update working asset from graph, um, just sanity check that we have an asset and that we have a graph. We don't have either of those, just return. And now we want to get our custom runtime graph. And so uh, we'll also, well, we'll include it in the header, so I'll include it later. Um, but we'll make a U custom runtime graph. And we're going to make this a new object. It's parented to the working asset. And we're gonna set working asset graph to this runtime graph. So now we're gonna need a couple of data structures for our algorithm here. So basically we're going to explore all the nodes and the links, and we're gonna create corresponding nodes and links in the runtime portion. But because we haven't created all the nodes on the first run through, we can't actually create the links until after the first pass. So we're just going to store what the links are and then we'll do another pass through all of those connections and actually make them. Uh, so first we're gonna need an array and this will just be a standard pair of global unique IDs. And this is gonna be the connection. So each of those IDs will be one of the, uh, one of the pins in that connection. And then we're gonna need a map to map the uh, ID to the runtime pin to make that connection. So and this will make sense in a sec, but this will be a fquid to u custom runtime pin, ID to pin map. And now we're just going to loop over all of the nodes in our working graph. And remember this is the editor graph. So for u add graph node, node, or we'll call it UI node to distinguish it from the runtime mode node. So for UI node in working graph nodes, we're gonna 
create a runtime node to represent it. So you custom runtime node. And it's parented to the runtime graph we just made. And runtime node position will be an F vector 2D and we'll get the UI nodes position. So just copy that over. And then we want to copy all the pins as well. So for each UED graph pin in the UI node pins, uh, we're going to create a U custom runtime pin. And we'll parent that to the node since that's what owns the pin. And we'll set the runtime pins name to the UI pins name. And we'll set the runtime pins ID to the UI pins ID. And we need to, if this has any connections, record the connection. But we only want to record the connection um, at the output side since uh, you don't need to record both. So we're just gonna check if UI pin has any connections and UI pin direction is the graph pin direction PGPD output. Then we're gonna make a pair of GUIDs that represents the two sides. So F GUID, F GUID connection equals std make pair ui pin pin id ui pin link to pin id and it's safe to do um link to zero here because uh we know there's only ever going to be one connection on each pin because of our schema rules you could do a sanity check here if you wanted to um and we know that it has connections since we checked that first as well. And so we'll just add this to our list of connections. Okay, and then our ID do pin map. We can add this as well. So UI pin, pin ID, runtime pin. This will map that ID to the actual pin when we're making the connection later. And if the UI pin Direction is e graph pin direction egbt input. Then runtime uh, runtime node input pin equals the runtime pin. Otherwise, we're going to add it to the output pins on the node. So runtime node output pins add runtime pin. So again, we're just copying over all of the um, editor stuff into our runtime stuff. So we got, if it's an input pin, it will be the runtime nodes input pin. If it's an output pin, we add it to the list since you can have as many outputs as you want. And lastly, we want to add that node to the runtime graph. So runtime graph nodes.add runtime node. And then again, that's in the uh, the first for loop here. Don't put it in the inner for loop. And so that will create all of our nodes and all of our pins for each of the UI nodes and UI pins. And after that's done, we need to iterate through that list of connections that we made throughout that. And now that all the runtime pins have been created, we can go through and connect them all if needed. So let's iterate over our list of connections. So it's to be pair, fquid, FGUID uh, connection in connections. We'll get the first one, U custom runtime pin, pin one. And then we'll look it up from our map that we made. So connection first. And we'll get the second one as well. Pin two is uh, the second on that pair. And we'll set pin one. Connection equals pin two. And that's it. That should be all of the data moved over to our runtime representation. And 
this will be called when you save. Uh, but first, let's finish the other way. So now we want to just do the same thing, but in reverse. We're going to take a runtime graph and we're going to update the editor graph to match it. And so, very similarly, if working asset graph equals null pointer, we're done. We can return. There's no graph to update. If not, we're going to need to remember our connections. So, t array, std pair, f quid. F quid connections. We're gonna need a T map F quid to U editor graph pin this time, instead of the other way around. So ID to pin map. And for all of our runtime nodes now, uh, U custom runtime node, runtime node in our working assets graph. Working at asset graphs nodes, we're going to make a U custom graph node. And again, this is the R custom version of the editor graph node, so this is still editor only. So that will make a new object. U custom graph node. And it will be parented to the working graph. And this is why we needed to include a custom graph node at the top earlier. So we made the node. Now we need to set the node's properties. So we'll create a new GUID. You could save the GUID in the runtime graph, but since we don't, um, we don't really need it for anything right now, we'll just generate a new one. Uh, set the position X to runtime node position X. And we'll set position Y to runtime node position Y. And if runtime node input pin is not null, which it should be, we should always have an input pin. And we'll get u custom runtime pin and equals runtime node input pin. And we'll make a corresponding u editor graph pin ui pin equals new node wait custom pin. And we'll give it e graph pin direction egbd input and the pin name. Yes, yeah, the runtime pins name. And UI pin pin ID equals the runtime pin pin ID. And if it has a connection, then we'll add a connection to the map. STD make pair. Uh, pin, pin ID to pin connection pin ID. So just record that connection. And then, oops, outside this if ID to pin map, just like we did before, we're gonna add the pins or the runtime pins pin ID to the UI pin that we just created so we can remember which one to use later. And outside the if block, so that's for the input pin, we also need to record the output pins. So for you custom runtime pin, Runtime pin equals runtime node output pins. So all of the output pins. Now uh, we want to make a uEd graph pin UI pin. And that's going to be a new pin just like above. We can just copy paste that even. And set input to output instead. And similarly, UI pin pin ID will be the runtime pin ID. And once again, if it doesn't have a connection, we're going to record it and we can just copy paste this from above as well. So we're going to make our pair of pin IDs. We're going to add it to our map. And then lastly, we're going to add the node to the working graph. So uh, working graph, add node, new node. And now that we have all the nodes, once again, we need to go through and remake all the connections. So for each of those pairs, we 
Okay, we'll get both of our pins. You added a graph pin from pin equals ID to pin map connection dot first. And the two pin will be connection dot second. And we just need to link them. Now there is a function on pin to link, but we actually don't want this to trigger uh, anything that will make the graph be modified or show up as modified. Since this is when, this is gonna be called, be called when the uh, graph is opening. And so we don't want it to open already in the uh, modified state. So uh, instead of uh, calling the helper method for this, we're actually just gonna ac access the linked to list directly. So link to dot add two pin and two pin link to add from pin. And yeah, this will make it so that the editor doesn't come up already modified. So that should be all we need to do for these methods. So now we have the ability to go both from our working asset to the editor graph and back. And so when the graph first is opened, we wanna call that uh, that update method. So uh, let's see. I think we want to do it right after we set the mode. So we'll call update editor graph uh, from working asset. And that will load it. And now you may be asking, how do we know when to go the other way? So Whenever we change the graph, how do we know that? And how do we update our corresponding working asset when that happens and make sure that that always happens before we save. And probably the most robust way of doing this is just to detect graph changes and just update whenever the graph changes. Um, you could also try to detect when, um, whenever the editor is saving update just before it saves, uh, whatever makes more sense to you. But uh, let's do the, uh, graph changed way in this tutorial. So I'm just going to go to uh, custom asset editor app dot H and we're going to add a couple methods here. So first we're going to override a few uh, virtual void on close. We'll override that and void on graph changed. We'll need and we'll call this whenever the graph gets changed and it will take an F graph edit action. We're not gonna need this, but if your gra graph gets really big, you might wanna do, um, you might wanna just persist changes to it rather than the whole thing every time. Again, sort of depends on your use case. And at the, at the bottom, we're gonna need to store a delegate handle. And this will be for the graph change listener. So graph change listener handle. And we'll wanna implement these methods now in our CPP file. So I'll implement those real quick. All right, so first let's register for graph change events. So if you come up to our init editor method, right at the end here, we're just gonna do graph change listener handle equals working graph add on graph change handler and f on graph changed f delegate rate sp and we'll give it our class and we'll give it our on graph changed method so custom asset editor app on graph changed so that'll just hook up to that delegate and now I overrode on close because uh, you probably want to update whenever you're closing, even if the graph doesn't change. So update working asset from graph. And you also want to remove the graph handler when the window closes. So working graph move on graph change handler. And that's why we stored the handle. So graph change listener handle. And we want to call the super class. This is not a U object. And actually I need to correct these uh, method definitions. Uh, and because it's not a U object, we can't use the super macro like you can in other classes. So we have to call the, um, the super class manually. 
And because the uh, workflow-centric application doesn't have this method, we have to go to one class above that, which is F asset editor toolkit on close. That's our super method. And we wanna make sure you do that after these other two, cause we wanna uh, make sure everything's done before the window actually closes. And then in on graph changed, all we want to do is update. So update working asset from graph. And it looks like I have quite a few typos here. Uh, my apologies. It's like I have a capital I here. It shouldn't be there. Uh, it should be second. Uh, this should be UI pen. Should be working assets. Uh, this also is F ed graph edit action. I believe I messed that up in the header as well. Uh, I put in, should be handle, not handler. We're adding a handler, we're getting a handle. And I, uh, didn't actually finish my pragma once in custom runtime graph.h. So, and just two more typos. This should be output. And I typo the semicolon. And I forgot my parentheses on make pair. And it looks like I have another capital I problem here as well. And the same issue with make pair here. And uh, we'll try that. All right, so now if we open our asset, once again, we have no nodes here, but let's create a node and we'll make a couple more. And let's add a couple pins to this one. And let's delete a couple pins from this one. And we'll save that, we'll close it and open it back up. And everything got loaded correctly again. Uh, one thing I did notice when I added a pin here is uh, another output has a black pin there. So we can actually debug that real quick. I believe that's just because the uh, context menu version in the schema is not using the new create pin action, uh, or rather in a custom graph node. So in custom graph node in our add pin, yeah, it's still using the old create pin method. So we'll just quickly replace that with create custom pin. And it just takes the direction and the name. So we'll just call this another output and that should fix that as well. All right, so once again, the we just closed the editor and reloaded it and see how it remembered the positions and all the nodes, including all of the pins. And if I add pins, you'll see they're the correct color now because it's using our custom method. So this has been a tutorial on how to enhance the editors for custom assets within Unreal Engine 5. If you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you do. If you have any questions about any of this, just ask them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer. Or if you have any requested videos or additions to this, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching everybody and have a good one.